Hey, thank you, Tina. Hey, well, hey, it's good to be here. Thank you to every mortgage professional that's on today's call. Uh, every time we do a training, we want to make it valuable. So part of making it valuable is for you to not be multitasking, get as much value out of this call as possible. Feel free to follow along with your own mobile device. So on the screen in just a minute, you know, Tina will pull up the Mortgage Coach Rate Watch app. And as Tony Blodgett, today's special guest, talks, you know, feel free to follow along so you get kind of an experiential learning. Um, before I bring Tony in and I hand it off to Tony Blodgett, I do want to position this around, you know, we're here to help you convert more of the families, the leads, the referrals that you get into not only loans, but the clients for life. You know, that is why we're here. That we're not here to just teach you how to read, you know, mortgage-backed securities and rate watch. It's about improving your conversion rate. It's about getting more realtor referrals. So I do want to shine a light on an article that we posted in our LinkedIn and my LinkedIn profile called The Lead Conversion Playbook by Mortgage Coach. So that playbook was one, it was a team effort. Tina helped with that. We're still updating it. So I would say almost every week since I published it, we've updated about two or three times. And I wouldn't be surprised after this call if we add another strategy to that playbook. So it will, it will be updated, uh, but I want to make sure everybody reads that. And when you think of, you know, why do you need to use rate watch? Why do you need to listen to Tony? It's to get more leads and referrals from agents and it's to convert more of those into clients for life. So with that said, Tony, um, Tony Blod, a good personal friend of mine. He's been, you know, a top 1% producer in the country and now he leads teams. You know, Tony is a regional leader. And Tony, I'll let you say anything you want to say about your backstory, and then why don't you take it and walk us through how to turn Rate Watch into a conversion tool and a sales tool? Sure. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Dave. I uh, appreciate you having me on the call. As you mentioned, um, yeah, I used to be uh, producing at a high level and have been on the leadership side now for the last, I don't know, uh, eight, 10 years or so. Um, but still really involved with sales training and building teams, as you mentioned. I'll have my 21 year anniversary in the mortgage business next month so um i've uh, i've been doing this for a while and uh you know as i think specifically about first of all i think rate watch is is a tremendous tool i've been as you know a huge fan of it um since the day that you guys uh offered it i think i was one of the very first to get access to the mobile app uh when that was in beta testing i was really excited about having that instead of just the widget on your desktop, which I'm going to talk a little bit about both and how I've used those over the years. Um, and uh, but but it's just a, a great tool. Um, but I want to start by just talking about the concept of being uh, an expert in our industry. I mean, fiscal literacy and understanding what moves uh, mortgage rates is still really really important for a loan officer to, to grasp. I think that. You know, when I first got in the mortgage business and before Dodd-Frank, when, you know, loan officers would like play the rate game and they would use, you know, some sort of an MBS tracking tool as a, excuse me, uh, a tracking tool as a way of, uh, you know, kind of trying to make more money because the industry allowed you to do that. I think it was relevant. And when that went away, I think there's a handful of people who kind of didn't see as much of a value in using a tool like rate watch and i gotta say that i think it's a huge missed opportunity um, for those that aren't using this tool so just i think laying the groundwork that being someone who understands what moves mortgage-backed securities and, and how it works is going to set you apart from your competition certainly set you apart from an online lender or a call center type person um, if you're a more referral type uh type loan officer which i think if you're using Mortgage Coach, uh, more than likely you are. Um, Dave talks about this in the playbook multiple times, differentiating yourself, and this is one way. And because it's mobile, because it's in an app, it is high tech, um, although it's pretty basic information. So just first of all, deciding that you want to be an expert uh, or at least some level of expertise around this topic. So when I first got in the mortgage business, I was going out in the field. There was a service back then, and I'm going to date myself. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure every morning we got like a fax that came in, and it was kind of a market update. And it was uh, it was in a fax, and we would cut and paste, you know, a header and a footer, and put our business card on there. And I would take that out in the field, and 
you know, what's funny about the mortgage industry, and I know you guys see this, is that when you go to a real estate office or even talking to a buyer, or frankly, you talk to someone on the street and they say, what do you do for a living? And you say, oh, I'm in the mortgage business. The first question out of their mind is, oh, well, what are rates doing? And I learned really quickly that if you could have a more intelligent response to that question, then, oh, you know, they're around four and a half right now. And, you know, they're still really good. Um, that's one way of answering the question. Or the other way is to say, you know, I'm, I'm glad you asked. There's actually a lot going on right now that's impacting interest rates. It was interesting because yesterday the feds came out with their announcement. They did raise rates another quarter, uh, which, uh, which raised the short term rates and actually had a modest uh, improvement to uh, the long term rates. And then they spoke about kind of what their uh, policy is going to be moving forward. And, uh, and, and I honestly think that as a result of uh, their actions trying to keep inflation at bay, um, you know, it's, it's going to help in mortgage interest rates stay where they're at or even improve a little bit as, as the year goes on. But, you know, we'll have to watch it really closely. Um, and so you can start, depending on who your audience is, just saying something like that goes, oh, wow. I mean, this person is kind of an expert at what they're, at what they're doing. And depending on who that person is, if it's a realtor, you may want to continue that conversation. You may want to just pull out your mobile apps. As a matter of fact, you know, look at what the market's done over the last week and, and having Rate Watch to use as an illustration while you're talking to a realtor just shows them how quick, it's a quick on the draw. It's like, here's what the market's doing. Here's what it's done. Here's how we keep an eye on it. Uh, every morning we get this commentary. So I think that just, it, it really enhances that conversation with a realtor. I mean, certainly you're gonna talk about, you know, how you close loans quick and on time, what products you offer, how you offer a total cost analysis with every borrower, but it's just another piece to be able to illustrate, which you can do very quickly by changing the way you respond to what a rate's doing um, and telling someone actually what rates are doing and then telling them what's actually going on in the market. Um, I think it, it, it completely changes it. Um, Dave, anything to add to that? No, I mean, I think, you know, the point I want to make is that it's not about the technology. Well, you know, we highly recommend that you download the app and we see more and more of our mortgage professionals have it on iPads that might be a, you know, a second or a third screen on their desktop. You know, the, the, the idea is that it is a visual example, you know, and if nothing else, it helps you be positioned to someone that has your pulse on the market. And, you know, sometimes you're playing offense where you're saying, hey, I've got my pulse on the market and I'm going to help you better execute. And sometimes you're playing defense, you know, and hey, rates change. And you're saying, hey, look, rates change. See? You know, so I, I think, you know, the point I would, would want to make is that, you know, I don't know what the, the term is, a picture tells a thousand words or a picture tells a million words, but it's a lot. And so when you have a picture that's interactive, that's, the pulse of the market, I mean, it gives you an advantage if you learn to have that conversation. So that's all I have to say. Yeah. No, I, uh, For now. yeah, <laughs> you always got stuff to say, Dave. No, I, I totally okay. agree. I think, you know, the, the last thought of, around um, using this with, with real estate agents is, is letting them know that you're also going to take the time to educate their customers about what rates are doing. Um, look, most of the time when you're getting a referral in from a real estate agent, it's not like they're under contract and they're ready to lock in their rate that day. But yet, the first thing they still ask you is what's your rate today? And I think that it's really important to, to make that part of that initial scripting is not just, well, there's a lot of factors that affect your rate, obviously DTI, credit score, loan program, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but also talking about the market moving because there's multiple variables and uh, not that you wanna overly confuse a customer, but you want them to go, wow, I didn't realize there was so many factors. You know, I'm, I'm glad I'm working with an expert. So positioning yourself that way is, is pretty easy to do um, by leveraging these tools. So let's talk a little bit more about use. So I was, that's kind of more the way I would position it with a real estate agent. I really want, I loved it when I would go out in the field as a young loan officer and they, the real estate agents were looking to me for, hey, what's the market doing? What's it going to do in the future and why? And if you can start positioning yourself as that, um, you know, I, I think it goes a long way. It, it helps you engage in meaningful conversations that can convert to, you know, asking for their business. Um, so, so keep that in mind as a, as a strategy to kind of uh, break down barriers with real estate agents. Hey, Tony, uh, Tony yeah. real quick. Uh, I saw a question that just came in. You know, and obviously there's a lot of people on the call that use Rate Watch and they just want to get sales strategies from you. But yeah. a question just came around like Day Watch. You know, there's a, 
a number of different, you know, screens, which, which ones would you recommend most when you're talking to a realtor? That is a really good question. So here's the thing is you, you kind of got to know, um, you kind of got to know all of them and then there's not that many. Um, but the things that you need to look at is what, what, like Dave said, a picture's worth a thousand words, but a picture also needs to be framed right with the right lighting and it's got to be the right angle and it's got to present what the, the photographer wants to illustrate to the, to the person looking at the picture. It's the same thing with using this app uh, in this strategy. You got to find what chart is going to illustrate the best, whatever message it is you want to communicate to the borrower. So for instance, if, uh, you know, I was talking to um, one of my loan officers the other day and he sent me a, a text message. He goes, hey, Tony, should I lock? I got a bunch of loans to lock in. Should I lock them in today? The market had been on a multi-day improvement. Um, it was, this was just like back at the end of, end of May here. And I don't know how many points it went up, about 100 or so in a pretty quick period of time. And I could have just said, yeah, man, you should definitely lock today. Um, but instead of just telling him that, what I did is I, I pulled out the app. I went back and I see you've got that. Can you go back, uh, Tina, on a maximum amount of time there? Go all the way back to where it shows like February, March or so. So what I did is I, I went back and I showed him this chart and it showed a longer period of time. And you see all this area around March or so where we just bounced around that same level. And I could show him on the chart like, look, man, we just had this big run up and look how long we spent um, at this little sideways pattern around 223. Uh, we, you know, and I said, so look, chances are this is an a well established level of resistance that we're going to hit. I took a screenshot on my iPhone. I drew a couple lines with, you know, that the, the feature on the iPhone to draw some lines. I sent it off to him and I said, look, we could keep rallying. However, the, the, the technical details here are, are, are telling us we're going to hit resistance right about now. Sure enough. And I could pull up the text it's 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 right in my phone i looked at it earlier today sure enough that was the peak and it went down and, and he locked a bunch of loans but that's the exact same strategy that i might use when i'm talking to a borrower trying to encourage them to lock in their loans matter of fact I, and I, I know that uh i'm pretty sure that loan officer took that screenshot shared it with a couple of their clients and said hey i think we should lock today and here's why um so to answer your question so, you, you kind of got to know totally not just go ahead Oh, I wanted to, while you said share, I want to make sure everybody is aware of that you can take it from the app, you can share it, you can text it, email it, Facebook it, or clip it and put it into some other marketing piece. So just want to, Tina will cover that, you know, probably towards the end of the call. But I, as Tony said, share, it's super important that everybody on this call, you know how to use it, you know scripts to use it, and then you know how to share it effectively in all the different channels out there. Keep yeah, it going, bro. So I use both, right? So I'll use the share feature within the app, but sometimes I want to do some quick annotations. I'm on the road and, 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 and through, and which you could probably copy it, save it to your photos, but sometimes it's quick to do a screenshot. So I use both the share feature embedded and uh, my, just a screen capture and, and go. So, but back to my point, I think for that particular illustration, I needed to show a long enough chart that it showed where this resistance was that I was referring to so that I could then draw a line that said, hey, here's why I think we should lock today. Not just, hey, we've had this big run up, but we've had this run up and now we're battling this resistance and, and capture that in my, in my you know, photo, if you will, that I sent over. Now, I may, for a different conversation with a borrower, I may want to illustrate where, you know, a shorter period of time where rates have, you know, they, they went down and maybe they rebounded, you know, 50%, which is pretty normal. I just want to just show them that because any other data is going to confuse them. So then I would just show them that. Um, other times, what I'm trying to convey to people is not necessarily that we should lock, but the simple um, education of how volatile the market can be. And that's where I use day watch. So day watch is something I use all the time at point of sale. And I always try to think of a recent day where we had quite a bit of volatility. And so that day that uh, that he was asking me that question, it was May 29th, and there was massive movement in the market on May 29th. And so I'll just kind of earmark those. And the cool thing, as you're seeing here on the screen that, that Tina's showing you, you can go in, you can choose any day, you know, past days and show people, um, you know, days that we had a lot of volatility. And I think it's important because Honestly, the average person, I don't believe, understands that rates can actually change sometimes multiple times throughout the day. 
And um, and this is where you know we take for granted that we know this. We're mortgage professionals. I mean, I've always said, and this isn't really uh, to bang on on real estate agents, but you know, after you're in the mortgage business for about 30 days, you know more about uh, you know our industry than a realtor does who's been doing it for 20 years. And that's that's not to to, to bang on realtors. It just means that you get so immersed in the education of learning about the mortgage industry that it. You, you, you forget what you know and what, what others don't know. And I relate this kind of to martial arts. So I, I was in martial arts about half of my life. And I think that you, we need to think about, you know, our level of understanding of, of whether it be just, you know, fiscal literacy in general or understanding, you know, you, using these, these techniques is, you know, uh, when you're a white belt. So, so when I would bring in a, a, a kid and I did a lot of teaching in our karate school. So when someone comes in for the very first day, um, and the difference between a white belt and a yellow belt is really just learning the basics. And there's only like five blocks and like one kick and two punches that you need to learn. It's really basic. Um, and that's all you need to learn. And it takes about 60 days um, to go from white belt to, 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 to yellow belt. Uh, maybe even 30 days if they're really competent. But what we take for granted, we think it's really basic. So I want to teach someone like a down block. It's a really simple thing to do. But the first time you see someone do it, their arms go all over the place. And, you know, they just they just can't do it because they've never done it before. And some of these basic conversations with borrowers, they just have no clue of, of, of how these things work, what a rate sheet looks like, the fact that there is different rates and there's discount points. And we learn this stuff right away. And that's you at least have to be I mean, there's no way you're not a yellow belt at understanding um, kind of fiscal literacy and mortgage-backed securities and, and interest rates compared to your typical borrower. Now, is there more educated borrowers? Of course there are, but most of them have no idea how this works. Um, I think to really move yourself from kind of this yellow belt level to, to more advanced, I think you need to spend every morning listening to the market commentary. So Dan Rawwich puts out an amazing update every day. Uh, for the most part, I think you need to get used to listening to that every day. Start using some of the things that he's talking about in your scripts when you're talking to real estate agents uh, and, and with borrowers. Um, and, and really just kind of starting to understand the basics of how to even like when you see a candlestick on a chart, what, what does that represent? You know, because what it, it'll show you where, where the market opened, where it closed, high, high mark, low mark. And just understanding that now you're kind of like a blue belt, purple belt. You got, you know, enough to be dangerous. Uh, but I think that it's important and as you kind of evolve through there. You know, I would start, uh, you know, as you're watching that, you're learning more about it. I would start trying to predict what you think Dan's going to say the next day. So you start doing your own kind of projections. Here's based on the chart, based on historical data, based on reports that I know are coming out. And you can start forming your own opinions and, and really start becoming an expert and an advisor in this area. And it takes some time to be confident in doing that. And you always got to throw disclaimers in there. Even Dan does. He says, look, I, I, I can't tell you exactly. No one's got a crystal ball, but you can do a lot of educating yourself and, um, and, 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 and get yourself to that next level. Um, so think of it that way. Um, you do know more than the average person and we forget it. And the nice thing about these tools is it gives us, as Dave said, uh, an illustrative way to show someone volatility. So long, long way to answer the question, but you need to know, I would get used to looking at your charts, both sideways on your phone, uh, you know, la landscape and vertical, because it'll tell a different story. Um, I would, uh, I, I would, Look at the day watch and, and earmark days that show volatility so that you can build a script around it showing someone explaining how much the market can actually move. And, you know, that's an important script to share so that people decide not to float. Like, I, I don't want a large floating pipeline and I don't know who who likes stressful. You know, you want to get those people locked in and move on. Um, but at the same time, if there's an obvious move going to happen in the market, you know, let your borrower know. Show them why. Say, you know, we, we've we've. Come to, we've lost this much in, 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 in six days. Chances are we're going to hit this level of resistance. We're going to recover a little bit. Are you on board with us waiting? Because I'd love to get you, you know, that four and three eighths instead of four and a half. And this is what it's going to take. And just have an open conversation with them. Show them the chart. And then when the market moves the next day or the day after, you can just go screenshot or hit share, send it to them. Say, okay, remember I told you this was going to happen. It just happened. Let's lock. And it can really get someone off the off the dime and commit to locking 
when they maybe are looking to drag their feet a little bit. You can create some urgency because you've positioned it. You've told them, hey, there's going to come a day I'm going to tap on your shoulder and say, today's the day. Here's why. Send the screenshot and, and get them to commit to lock. So um, you, you really need to spend some time learning, you know, 10-day chart, three-month chart, max six-month chart, day watch, you know, and play with that and, and frame up a vision of what you want to convey. Does that, does that answer the question? Hey, so that, that, that does. And I want everybody to, to realize what I took from what you said, that going from white belt to yellow belt, and really, you know, while some loan officers want to become a black belt, not everybody does. Some loan officers want to be a brown belt. Not everybody does. But my takeaway is everybody should be a yellow belt. If you're a mortgage pro and you're a referral based local loan officer who, who is going to compete against the, the Costco lenders, the online lenders, you know, the banks, you know, where clearly the loan officers are not even yellow belts. Um, they, they, all they need to do is know how to use day watch, when to use it, how to use it, how to share it, when to share it. And they need to listen to Dan Rollins. That's, Yellow belt, yellow belt, mortgage coach, yellow belt, and right watch. Is that fair to say? Spot on. You, you, yeah, you're absolutely correct. If you do those things, you know more than pretty much any customer or realtor you're going to talk to. You're not an advisor at that point, but you're at least showing that you have interest in it. And, and you will over time. Just doing that, you know, look, it's hard to stay a yellow belt forever if you're going to class. You know what I mean? You're going to pick up the basics and some, so your, your sensei is going to say, man, it's time to test for your blue belt. You've, you've been coming for six months now. It's, you're just going to learn it, you know, um, if you commit to doing those couple things. So, so I couldn't agree more. So, so, so let me pull one other kind of takeaway what I'm hearing is if you just keep listening to the Mortgage Coach Morning Update. And remember, folks, we're putting more content out, out than that. You know, we've got our YouTube channel where we've got calls recorded with Tony, we've got calls recorded with Dan, you know, we have more content than that. But if you really just tune in and spend like five minutes a day in the, you know, getting smart in the Rate Watch app, you, you will become a black belt. Is that fair to say, Tony? Uh, yeah, I think you could become a brown belt or green belt. A black belt, you're going to have to be a little more intentional, I think, to finally get there. But, uh, but yeah, the black belt, you know, but yeah, absolutely. You're going to move through the ranks just by tuning in and checking out what's available. Absolutely. Cool. We'll keep it going. By the way, Tina, anything you have to add at this point, you know, from a product standpoint or any questions that have come in that we should hit with Tony? Absolutely. We do have a couple of questions and they both pertain to the same question. So Craig and Dan, you have the ability to change what you have showing, the bond and coupon that you're choosing. When you go back to that home screen, up in that upper right corner where it says parameters, clicking on there, you can change the agency by simply choosing which one you want. If you choose to change it, it sticks. It stays on the one that you want. On the same thing, if you click up there, and you want to choose the coupon, you can change the coupon as well. So we have chose here at Mortgage Coach, we put the standard, the basis off of what a lot of people are already looking at, but if that's not what your company's using, by all means, change it, and then it's changed for you permanently. So there is, um, that's the only questions that we've really had come through. So anything else you want me to show right now, Tony, for you? Oh, I, well, I got a couple other things I want to I want to add, but um, also note that it is important, especially if you're trying to follow along with with rate changes that your company's doing. You do want to mirror their coupon, but most companies are going to be using the same coupon. I personally like to make sure that my rate watch is set up to whatever Dan is currently talking about, because that way his commentary and and because you know, it's all going to move very similarly. Um, but that way his commentary and the numbers he's using are in line with what I'm seeing on the chart. It's just going to help it sink in better and it's going to help you kind of build some scripts off of his dialogue. So I just try to mirror mine to what, what Dan's is at. I, I think one other technique you guys that I might mention is, you know, like I said before, most of the time when a borrower gets introduced to you by a real estate agent, um, or wherever that referral comes in from, and you have this initial conversation about your rates and where you're at in the market, and you, you talk about uh, you know, how you watch mortgage-backed securities. I think it's really important to have a script that, that, that in some way conveys the message that, look, um, locking in um, the lowest rate 
possible on the wrong day could cost you money, right? So if you lock in a rate on a, on a, on a horrible time and we can see that the market's gonna recover and you give the advice to your customer, let's wait a couple of days, it's pretty obvious what's gonna happen or we know that this news is being released and we're, we're not 100% sure, we're very confident that I can make some improvement. I mean, maybe you can pick up a half point better in discount. Um, so I think that I like to use that script, you know, locking in with the lowest lender on the lowest day could be a mistake. Uh, you want to work with someone who's going to work with you to come up with a good rate lock strategy. Um, so try to incorporate that into your conversation. And then I also use it as a follow up, as an update. So we all have, you know, maybe drip campaigns or other follow up techniques. I'm sure some people have, you know, every pre approval. They're going to they're going to reach out, you know, every Thursday and check in with them or whatever. But you know, if you've had a conversation with them up front about the market and the market movement. I loved using the share feature just to send an email to them or a text message to them and say, hey, I know we talked a lot about rates when, when you were in my office three weeks ago. I just I know you're still looking for a house. You haven't found anything yet, but I want to keep you abreast as to what's going on in the mortgage market. Hey, take a look at the move that we've seen in the last week or you know, rates are trending up or trending down or just as a communication tool and another way of getting in front of um, those leads that you're trying to incubate. So I think that's a good strategy as well. Hey, Tony, I want to insert something. First of all, I hope everybody wrote down that script. And Tina, if you could make sure we write that down. And let's, when we do a social post on the recording of this, let's make sure we give people some of that scripting around just how to position yourself that, hey, locking in the loan on the wrong day could cost you a lot of money. I mean, it could cost it eight, a quarter. And, and then I, I just want to insert, because remember, this is all about lead conversion. And, you know, I want to reference back to the, the lead playbook that we created. There are some tenets and some strategies. And I, I think we're going to add a strategy just around that, Tony. I mean, I think that makes sense. Position yourself as a market expert and have some scripting and a conversation, you know, a topic with the client where that point is made that, you know, I have my pulse on the market and I am going to be able to help you with a rate lock strategy. Most lenders can't do that. And then of course, when you do that in synchronization with the total cost analysis and you're delivering options, like I'm hearing now more than ever, even top, you know, some loan officers that, you know, don't use total cost analysis on every client, they're not doing that anymore because they want to make sure every single family is getting options with points, without points, monthly MI, annual MI, whatever is relevant to the client. In today's market, you've got to give family options and you've got to position yourself and you've got to convince them that you are a market expert that can help them with their rate lock strategy. So I just wanted to kind of connect that to the TCA and connect that to a bigger strategy. But keep it going. And we do have a question directly for Tony. The question is, Tony, based on today's market rates, how would you answer the question? What do you think is going to happen with rates over the next few days? Yeah, so, you know, my, my, right now I can tell you that I, I think that, um, I don't have to pull up my chart, but, uh, what, uh, let me look here. You got me on the spot, you know, let me, let me, let me pull it up. I'll tell you what. Well, wait, time out, wait, time out. I, I want to make sure before we even jump into market predictions, you know, one, Dan Roberts, we'll give you some color around that. And two, Tony, let's make sure we unpack all your content because when we promoted this event, we promote it as a 30 minute event. I want to make sure we get out all the core content and then we'll do Q and A and any market predictions as we close it out. Sure. Well, um, I, I have covered most of the, of the content I wanted to touch on. I think that, you know, if you look at where the charts at today and where we peaked out there at around May 29th, and then look, we've had a pretty big fall and we've started to recover. You know, I would cautiously assume that we're going to, um, continue this recovery but you know what gives me pause is really what the market did today if you look at today's candlestick chart uh, today's candle um, it just doesn't show a lot of strength moving forward we did not close at the top of the trading range today uh, at least what I'm looking at on my phone so you know I I would like to think that we're going to continue to to on this recovery um, based on the chart and maybe pick up another quarter um, but look, I got to be honest with you, my typical strategy, if I have someone who's in contract and, and you know, closing within the next 30 days, um, regardless, unless there's some obvious things in, in the chart that are glaring or something where Dan's really come out and said, look, we definitely, you know, 
I, I you know, chances are this is going to improve on Friday um, or whatever the case may be, or we should float through this announcement. Um, I'm typically encouraging my borrowers to lock. I, I am not a fan of floating loans. Um, and I think that when it comes to making that decision, uh, once they're ready, I mean, a lot of what I'm talking about is the initial conversation with the borrower, the conversation you're having during incubation, how you're positioning yourself uh, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a market leader. Um, but when it comes day to lock, unless there's something obvious, I typically would be encouraging a borrower to lock in their rate. Beautiful. Thank you. What I am going to do, Dan, if you're done with that aspect, before we open it up for questions, um, I'm going to go through a brief explanation of how to drive yourself through the RateWatch app. So are you good with that? Okay. When you are in RateWatch, in that upper right-hand corner, those three bars, that is your menu bar. By clicking on that bar, that's how you're going to move from screen to screen. The first screen is your landing screen. So right now you can see that the landing screen is blue. If the landing screen is red or green, you're going to be able to quickly look and see where's the market going. If it's red, there's chances rates might be going up. If it's green, there's chances rates might be going down. In the upper right hand corner, you can quickly change the parameters as I showed earlier to change the agency coupon analysis or time frame as well as in that upper right hand corner, the share button is in there for you to be able to quickly share the presentation. Now, the great thing about sharing is that you're not sharing the application itself. They cannot get that on their phone. You're only sharing a screenshot. And what that does is that keeps the power in your hands. So if they do have questions or concerns, they have to come back to you in order to get them answered. They cannot get this on their phone. When you click into there, first one is home screen, second one is day watch. We've touched on that day watch. You can go in and change it to whichever day you want by that upper right hand corner where it says date. Then we have the alerts. If there is a change of 15 basis points or more, you will see that alert. You'll see when it happened, what that change was. After that, we have our edge views. So the edge views is if you are using mortgage coach, if you have a client looking at your total cost analysis, it'll give you that client name, the time frame, how long they looked at the presentation. The commentary area is great. Not only do we have Dan in here, and Dan is great, but we also have Neil in here. And I like to explain the difference between these two. Neil goes deep dive. You really have to understand finances to typically understand what Neil's talking about. Dan is that layman term guy, and he also adds some humor into it. That's the one that most of your clients are going to be able to understand. Also in here, we have uh, Marcy in here. Marcy is our right-hand person in support. So if there is something going on at Mortgage Coach, something that you might want to make sure that you are a part of, going in here and reading Marcy's as well. And finally, towards the bottom, lender barometer. There's approximately 133 lenders tracked on this. This will tell you what are they doing as a whole. So we can see on here 33% of these uh, lender or of the people who are you're getting it from, <laughs> the lenders, they have improved the pricing. So their rates have gone down approximately 0.136 where 23 of them have worsened pricing, approximately the same amount. So we can see there is a little better marketing going on right now for that improving price. And finally, I'm gonna scroll all the way down to the bottom to the settings. Settings area allows you to be alerted. So if you wanna know when or what's going on in the market, you can choose how you want alerted, as well as you can choose the time frame. Now, I love this aspect because if you're one of those people who always forget to lock a loan and you want to make sure that you have an alert to lock that loan, to check into what's going on in the rates, set it for a little bit before it closes. So towards the end of the day, set it that timer on there. You'll get an alert on your phone. That'll be your quick reminder to say, hey, check the locks on your loans. See if you're all good or see if you need to lock something before you leave for the office today. So we do want to open it up um, for any questions that we have. We also have a couple of different areas that you can go in um, as being part of our community. And I want to touch those really quick before we go on. If you are not part of our Facebook group, 
we have Mortgage Coach Productivity Mastermind Group. This is an amazing group if you haven't gone in here. Um, one of the highlight things that we recently did was why Dave was out at the Mastermind uh, event. He actually recorded it live. So he was live streaming on here why they were presenting on the stage, which I think is really cool. We also, if you have questions or concerns, you're not sure of what direction to go into, we have people like Tony on here that come in and they help give their advice. What did they do? What works for their loan officers? How are they able to overcome that obstacle? So come in here, ask to join. One of us will approve you. We also have our YouTube site that was previously mentioned. And then the LinkedIn, make sure and go in, search for Dave Savage. When you search for Dave, underneath him, you'll scroll down. And that is where you'll find his articles and activities. This is where you will find a ton of articles. And what Dave typically does is he takes these interviews that are really great, and then he transcribes them into an article that for those people who like to read, who don't want to sit through and watch that video, they can come in here and read it. The lead conversion book is one of my favorites because if I was to scroll down through here and click on any of these sections, it takes me directly to that spot in the video. So I don't have to watch the whole video. I can watch only the section that I really want to watch. So that is all that I have for right now, but I do want to turn it back over um, to you guys. But if you do have questions, anything that you want to know, go ahead and drop us in the question area box, the questions that you have. So Tony, I do see another question. I do see another question and I want to give you the last chance to talk, but I do want to reference another part of my strategy when I create those LinkedIn articles is to create them as a companion learning tool. So one, we have a lot of new loan officers learning the mortgage business in Mortgage Coach. So, you know, having a video is great, having, you know, notes and a takeaway like the articles because, you know, every one of those articles, I usually, what I do is I take our best interviews, I have them transcribed, and then we turn it into, uh, you know, cliff notes. And so keep that in mind, you know, especially if you're listening to this and you're a new loan officer, and you're looking to go from zero to hero, you know, those LinkedIn notes, those LinkedIn articles are very intentional to help you. And hey, if you're a, a loan officer and you're a top producer and you just want to improve a skill or you want to you wanna upgrade your team, you know, you have new people start. You know, use the notes, use the YouTube ch channel as a resource to educate your team and educate yourself. Um, Tony, before you close it out with last thoughts, there was a question in here because you gave a really nice script of how you position this with a borrower. It, would you mind giving us a script if you were a mortgage coach, you're, you know, you're a black belt, but let's just say you're kind of a, you're a brown belt, you've got rate watch. What, what, is it, what is that one minute script sound like from a, with a realtor so that you just position yourself as a market expert. If you could answer that question for someone in the, in the Q and A, and then I'll let you close it out with any thoughts you have. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I'll touch on that. I think one other website, Dave, that might be worth mentioning or, or a Facebook uh, group uh, is, uh, you know, Dan does uh, put that on a Facebook at the top producing loan officers page as well. So look for top producing loan officers and, uh, you can get that commentary there. If, if you do have it set up, you'll get the notification. But on by your the phone. way, by the way, Dan has a podcast too. So if you could, um, if you could, um, just one second. If you could, um, Tina, put a link to Dan's po podcast in our um, Facebook group. Yeah, and go listen to that. There's six episodes. It's called Avoiding the Storm. It's super good. Um, yeah, you should check that out. But also, top producing loan officers Dan put you know posts his uh, commentary every morning there as well. So if you're cruising Facebook, you'll see it quickly and easily. So yeah, with realtors, you know, like I mentioned before, you know, I I think it's hugely important for the real estate community that you call on to know that when they want to kind of know what's going on with rates, they they think of you. So I think a good script would be um, again. Usually it comes up. Usually I'll use this script when a real estate agent asks me, hey, you know, what are rates doing right now? What do you think rates are going to do? That's when I would go into saying, hey, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm glad you asked. Matter of fact, there's a lot of things impacting rates kind of as we speak. So I would be prepared. Uh, the script's going to change, obviously, because what's going on is changing. So I would just give a quick, 
you know, few second recap of what's going on that week or something significant that happened last week or, you know, a couple of weeks ago, it was concerns over Germany and, 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 and their economy. You know, this week it was the Fed announcement. You know, just pick something that's going on in the market. And instead of saying, hey, yeah, well, actually rates look pretty good. They're around four and a half. Just position, just restructure that when, when that conversation comes up and say, actually, there's a lot of things that impact the market. I actually try to watch it very closely. And what's really cool is that I have this uh, this mobile app and, and a widget on my desktop computer. And I use this when I'm talking to, to your borrowers and really educating them on how much volatility really exists in the market. And I work with them on every occasion to come up with a rate lock strategy to make sure that we time uh, when it is we lock in their rate to get them the best deal possible. So, if, you know, that's kind of in a nutshell what I say. I just make sure that instead of making it a really short conversation where when the rate conversation comes up, I just say, hey, uh, their rates are around four and a half. Um, I go, well, actually, the, funny you should ask. There's a lot going on in the, in the market right now that is affecting interest rates. And here's kind of my thoughts on that. Here's how I educate myself. Here's how I use that to educate your borrowers. And here's where I get my information and maybe show them the app. Um, you can even... I, you know, again, typically they're asking you what's going on. But if you wanted to make it part of your presentation, I, I would just simply do that. Just say, you know, one of the other things that I do in addition to having these programs or whatever your presentation is of your value proposition to your real estate agent, just say one of the other things that we do uh, is we actually watch the market very closely. And it is really important. And there's many times where when there's volatility going on with, with mortgage interest rates, we can not only educate our borrower about it, um, because sometimes people get freaked out or it might cause them um, some concern over, you know, gosh, should I keep looking for a house? I heard rates went from, you know, four and a quarter to four and three quarters, um, you know, so I can have that conversation. What what created that happening? Uh, what, you know, is it possible that we're going to recover from that? Show them some charts. And again, all it's really doing is showing them that you watch the market. You know, you're you're a purple belt. You know a lot more than they do. And you don't have to have a crystal ball or even act like you have a crystal ball. It's just they go, wow, that's great to know that you're watching that and you're educating the borrowers that I referred to you about what's going on in the market and helping to keep them kind of at ease a little bit when they see volatility happening. Does that, does that help, Dave? Well, hopefully it helps. <laughs> well, it sounds like Dave's, uh, Dave was unable to uh, unmute or something, but he is traveling, so he might not even have reception. But I did go in and I dropped some information into your chat box. So one of them I did place in here is the Rate Watch Online. In there, there is all the updates in there with the commentaries. So you can go in there to um, read what's going on. You can also go and see you know, that home screen on what is going on in today's market. So looks like there are no other questions. Um, any last words, Tony, before we close this up? No, I just think that, you know, this is a great topic. I'm sure there's people on this call that, uh, you know, that use this every day, that watch Dan stuff. And I know there's people on the other end of the spectrum um, that just don't make, you know, don't make it intentional um, to use these strategies. So I really hope what, what you got from this is that, if you just do a couple things every day to start educating yourself more on, on how these work, hopefully you picked up a couple ideas on how to use this as a follow-up technique with your borrowers, how to position yourself as an expert with your real estate agents, and how to take the what's your rate today conversation and switch it to more of a I can help you with a rate lock strategy conversation, uh, and here's how I do that, and here's how we track that, and here's what you can expect from me um, you can you can really change the conversation around rate at point of sale, and I hope that's what people you know got from this. Uh, you can also feel free. I am on LinkedIn and Facebook, so if you want to uh, reach out to me there for any other questions, my contact information's there. Uh, be happy to help in any way that I can. Fabulous. Thank you, Tony. I do want to tell you there's several different thank yous in this little question area box um, from different people out there that say thank you. Uh, we appreciate your time here at Mortgage Coach and we really value the information that you brought us. So thanks for joining us. We do hope that all of you guys have a great productive week. Thank you and have a good night. Bye-bye. Thank you.